Hello, uh, how's, your, how's your COVID been? Uh, it's, it's November 2020 when I'm recording this. Um, I haven't done a video for, it must be at least six months now. Uh, I've just been so focused on other things and just didn't feel like I had anything, <laughs> anything worthwhile to say. I've just been busy doing my own stuff. I'm, I'm writing uh, my second book. Um, but today I wanted to talk about uh, immortals and mountains. Um, Mountains, mountains are significant to the Taoist tradition. Uh, they're significant to, to, to the Chinese spiritual traditions as well. Um, and they have been for thousands of years. Um, back in the old days, they had the, the Wu Yue, the, the, the five um, peaks. There are these special uh, mounds of significance within the, kind of the Chinese heartland. And then as history progressed and the Chinese uh, nation state grew, well, the various dynasties grew and expanded, um, there was more and more mountains got incorporated into, folded into, um, into the tradition, right? So now there's many different mountains. Um, and mountains are very significant for practitioners of, of Taoist arts. Um, you know, even the phrase to go into the mountains, Jin Shan, is, has, means to go on into deep retreat where you, you leave the world behind for, for weeks, months, years to go into the mountains and practice and, and f refine and focus on your craft and develop develop and transform. And so mountains um, symbolically are, are places that are um, separate. They're, they're removed from the normal world, uh, normal ch world of Chinese life, uh, family and society and whatnot. So mountains were seeing these sort of these distant places that um, uh, they're a little strange, you know, uh, they're, they're, they're seen as they're the closest thing to heaven. And so they're almost like a bridge to heaven or a, um, as we used to say in university, it was a liminal space uh, between heaven and earth, right? And so when we, when we, when we went uh, as Taoist practitioners, they would often go into the mountains to practice and become hermits in the mountains, find caves and, and practice within the mountains there. But um, there's more to it than that. The, the, there's an awful lot of really interesting symbology that, that's come up. Uh, and so I just wanted to chat a little bit about that. I actually have something here. Um, this, is, uh, this is a famous, um, a famous painting. Uh, I think it's about a thousand years old. I, can't, I think it's Song Dynasty. I can't quite remember the history. Um, but uh, you'll notice that it's a portrait. Now, what's interesting about this painting is it's a portrait, but it's done using a painting style that was only used, that was reserved for painting mountain scenes. Uh, and so if you were a, a, a scholar, uh, a traditional Chinese scholar, and you looked at this, it would, it, it would be a little, there'd be some cognitive dissonance that would be going on. Uh, it's a portrait of a person, but it's painted as if in a style of the mountains. Like you can see there's sort of the way that the, the brush strokes work and the ink works. It, it, it's, it, it evokes a mountain, um, but yet it's a person. And uh, I think, um, I'll set him, him there. Uh, and this is an immortal. It's a painting of an immortal. And it's kind of interesting, right? So what is that relationship between immortality, Im immortals, um, or transcendence, if you like that word better, or just the Chinese is xian, uh, and mountains. Um, and the two are, are linked so closely. Even just the, the Chinese character for, 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 for mountains, uh, Chinese character for immortal, which is xian, um, is comprises of two parts. One part of the character is, is shan, which is uh, mountain. And then the other part is person. And so the word itself, xian, um, means person of the mountain, person in the mountain, right? So even, even, even the very word itself binds together these, these two different ideas, immortals and mountains. And I think xian 
translating as immortal is a poor translation, and, and I've seen the translation of, of transcendent, and maybe that works better. Uh, it incorporates the idea of long life and, and even eternal life, to live as long as heaven and earth, as uh, Bao Puzi wrote. Um, but it's, it's more than that. It's more than that. It it's also has this element of transcendence, of, of um, um, a spiritual um, completion, right? Uh, and so to go through that process, you, you went into the mountains to do it. That was one element of it. Yeah. And for Taoist alchemy, where do you find the ingredients to do the alchemy, right? To do, to do alchemy, we need to collect the ingredients, right? Um, to, uh, to go and, and harvest the ingredients. And to do that for external alchemy, we go into the mountains, right? You, 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 you put on your hiking shoes <laughs> and your, your, your bag for your herbs and, and you walk up into the mountains and you, and you collect, you know, mushrooms and all the different herbs that they use in, in, and because later external alchemy was was not just sort of minerals and what we think of as, as you know uh, lead and mercury and what and, and whatnot uh, uh, um, it was herbs right so even now to this day there are lineages of external alchemy you can find in China and the yellow the yellow mountain in in Anhui province there's there's a famous lineage there that that they, they, know, they know those mountains very well and they go into the mountains and they harvest the various herbs and they bring it back and then they um, um, infuse them with their, their, their inner qi, their nei qi, um, to become very um, uh, effective forms of medicine that are used for practitioners to, to open certain channels in the body and, and, and work through different blocks in the body, energetic blocks. And so there is this sense of going into the mountains, not just a sense, but you're literally going into the mountains to get these herbs, bring them back and use them for your spiritual practice. Now internal alchemy uh, kind of took the metaphors of external alchemy and internalized it, right? And so what happened to the mountain? Well, the mountain became, became the body. Um, and so for the internal alchemist, going into the mountains meant to go in, inside the body. You go into the body and you, you harvest the medicine or the, 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 inter, the alchemical ingredients, the yao, right? It's hai yao. You, you go and you, you find the medicine inside and then you work with it. You, you, you um, apply methods and techniques from, from your lineage, from your teacher, uh, and, and see what happens. And, and so mountain the mountain really is it's a, it's a, it takes on a, a really rich uh, symbolic thing within Taoist practice and one of the, um, another place we could look is the the Neijing to I'm, I'm looking at it's right across the room from me hanging on my wall there um, I'll put it on this video so you can see it um, and so if you look at the Neijing to it's a mountain the top, you can see the nine peaks of, of, of the mountains at the very top, which represent the head. The bottom, there, there's, um, there's firmament, there's earth and, and rocks. And then if you look up the one side of, of the, the, the woodblock carving, you, you, uh, the Kun, Kunlun Mountains, the spine, right? So the spine is, is our, uh, the whole series. Um, what do you call that when mountains arrange, a mountain range, right? Um, and so the body itself becomes a mountain that we as practitioners go into to, uh, to find the medicine and, and do our internal uh, alchemical work. It's quite beautiful, really. And mountains were where the immortals were, right? The sense of if you wanted to find the immortals, you'd, you'd find them in the mountains because that's the closest to heaven. And to this day, for Taoist practitioners, all the mountain, the many different holy mountains in China um, where you you um, you want to go and practice, and each holy mountain f within my lineage, I'm f my my teacher is Wang Liping, and uh, within his Longmenpai lineage, there uh, there are very specific directions that are passed down what to do at each of these mountains. There's 32 different mountains and grottos and, and kind of these these holy sp um, places. Uh, and in each mountain, you'd, you'd work on different things. So, you know, if you went to Huashan, you'd work on one thing. If you went to Wudangshan, it'd be something else. Uh, and you go, and if, if you wanted to work on different parts of your practice, you'd go to different mountains, right? So it became a very, uh, very central part of, of the Taoist tradition. And that's why to this day, you know, the, so many of the, the Taoist uh, holy places are on mountains. You know, like the ones I just mentioned. There's many different, um, many different uh, Taoist um, holy places on these different mountains. 
Yeah, so uh, there's much more I, I could say about the, you know, the spiritual topography of the, of the body in relationship to a mountain, but uh, I'll just keep it short today. I just wanted to, to put some thoughts out there and, and, uh, and I hope you in, enjoyed it. Um, and I'll, I'll see you next time. So thanks for listening. Bye-bye. Thank you.